something planned for our lives. Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. And, and I want you to be encouraged because I know that God is doing more than we can see. I am blessed. Amen. To have my church family. And I want to take a few minutes just to tell you how much I appreciate my church family. Thank you. And I wasn't I wouldn't not I wasn't fishing for that this time. I, I don't know me. I'm, I'm trying to fish, but no, I I wouldn't fish it, but thank you. I, but uh I want y'all to know I really appreciate my church family. Sometimes you don't know what a place means to you. You feel me? Until you don't have it anymore. And um I'm just so thankful for what God has done in this church. Uh, January 1, uh, we will be celebrating 13 years. 13 years. And um, if you know like I know, 13 years doing anything (laughs) is an accomplishment. It feels like an eternity a lot of times. But not just doing it for 13 years, but I believe we've done it well. I know we've impacted a lot of people's lives. That much I know. I get a chance to read the reports and I hear from people uh, all over the world. Thank God for social media. Thank God for the Internet, because we literally are reaching people. People say this all the time, but they don't mean it. But literally all over the world, people are tuning in to the Freedom Church, uh, the growth that we've seen. uh, Because I know a lot of people, man, fell away from God this year. But I'm here and you're here and I just know that we are just blessed to be together. I want to read Psalms, the 23rd chapter today, and I want to teach and preach, so I don't know how this is going to come out today, but I'm going to start off teaching, and if y'all pull it out of me, you can get everything God has has put in me today. Familiar passages, we all know Psalms, the 23rd chapter, but I'd like for us to read it together, if you don't mind, and uh, we're going to do what we've done the last couple of Sundays. You guys have really caught on. Still got a couple of people struggling, but we're going to work with you, amen. You will read the first verse. (laughs) <laughs> it's true. I will read the second verse. Then you'll read the third, and I'll read the fourth. Then you'll read the fifth, and then together we'll read the sixth verse. Are y'all ready to do this? Come on, one, two, ready to read. The Lord, oh, that's yours. I'm acting like y'all. Okay, I'm sorry, I jumped on y'all part. Here's my part. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. You read. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I heard you, Pastor Tish. I will fear no evil. Get off my verse. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. One, two, ready, read. Thou mm. And together we read. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, forever, ever, forever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just want to say thank you for another day's journey. Thank you, God, that you allowed us to wake up with our right mind, activity of our limbs, and you blessed us with the privilege to come into a place where we can worship and praise you freely. God, as we endeavor to glean from your word today, I ask that you would speak through me. And I ask you to give me ears that want to hear what you have to say. I thank you because you are an awesome father. And there is none like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Today's message is entitled, I Recommend Jesus. Why don't you just look at your neighbor six feet apart, of course, and say, I I recommend recommend Jesus. Jesus. I want to start by making a statement that this world is a wilderness of want. This world is a wilderness of want. What do you mean by that, Pastor? We always want something. Christmas just passed by and there's a child somewhere mad and upset because they didn't get something they wanted. And they overlook all that was purchased and bought sometimes at an amazing sacrifice unbeknownst to children because we always want something. Many of us, when we get what we want, we realize it wasn't what we thought it was going to be. And then we want something else because we don't want what we got. 
I know people who destroy their health trying to get well. And then when they get well, they have to spend all their wealth trying to get their health back. This is a world that wellness is one. And, and here's the crazy part. Even if your bank account gets low, sometimes your bank account gets low and your blood pressure gets high. This world, man, is a crazy, crazy world from the cradle to the grave. Oftentimes it seems like if it ain't one thing, it's another. Do I have a witness that has ever experienced that? When you get the washing machine, fix the refrigerator tab. When you get the refrigerator fixed, what do your kids get in trouble? Once you get the kids out of trouble, your wife acting crazy. I ain't got no church in here. I got good news, though, for Alicia. In an ever-changing world, God gives us the answer. Matthew 7, 24 through 27 is the answer. It says, anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds on a Builds a house on a solid rock. What kind of rock? Solid. It says, though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse. It won't collapse. It won't collapse because it is built on a bedrock. Flintstones. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rain, not if, when the rains and when the floods come and when the winds beat against that house. You don't want to be that house because that house, it will collapse and it ain't going to be no silent crash. It ain't going to be no crash and ain't nobody going to recognize. It's going to be a mighty crash. What you build on makes a difference, Freedom Church. And I want to bless somebody today to understand this. If you want to build your life on a solid foundation, build your life on faith in Jesus Christ. This whole message is all about Jesus today. Because there are many entities that try to tell you there, there are multiple ways to get to God and, and you don't have to do all of that. The Bible says that no man comes to the Father except through Christ. And we've got to remind you from time to time that Jesus is the only way. Amen, somebody? Oh, don't shout me down now. He is the only way because God said he was the only way. He is a firm foundation that you can build your life on. And the life you build your life on, if it's Jesus, you're going to make it. Amen. There are a lot of folks, man, that are killing themselves trying to live. Imagine that, killing yourself trying to live. Some of you work with them. Some of you are that person. You're killing yourself trying to keep up with the Joneses. You're killing yourself trying to impress other people. You're, you're killing yourself trying to cover up a lie. Some people are going to eat themselves to death. Yeah, we're getting ready to fast. I wonder how many people are going to join us. Some people are going to drink themselves to death. Yeah, you need to slow your roll, amen. If you're drinking by 9 a.m. in the morning, you got a problem, amen, somebody? It's quiet in here now, amen. If you're drinking from anybody's bottle, you don't care where they might be, and you got a problem, amen, somebody? It's quiet in here today. Some of y'all going to drug yourselves to death. No, Pastor, ain't nobody here using drugs. Boy, stop. It's folk got to take drugs to wake up and take drugs to go back to sleep. You're going to drug yourself to death. And some of y'all hold your seat. Some of you going to sex yourselves to death. Just look straight ahead. Nobody know that's you. Saw a report this week that gonorrhea is on the rise once again, like never before because of COVID-19. And I read the comments. Some of y'all were nervous and some of y'all was angry and some of y'all was upset. I wonder why you worried. Amen, somebody. I looked at it and said, well, God bless them. Amen. You got to be careful in this world because there are multiple ways to ruin your life. Some people are going to try to push their way to power. Uh -huh. Yeah, some people will force their way to fame. And some people will manipulate their way to money and wealth. The question is, all for what? The Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and mess around and lose his soul? Some of y'all got the latest everything except for the latest Jesus. I wish I had a church in here. Some of you just got the new PS5. Some of you got brand new red bottom shoes. Some of you got nice diamond rings. Some of you got just some new Kanekalon. I see you. You're looking good. But do you have the latest Jesus in your life? I guess not. I got the latest Jesus. I'm always trying to get the latest Jesus because he is a foundation. Somebody say, I need that foundation. Ask your neighbor, say, do you have the right foundation? Tell your neighbor, don't build your life on a foundation that's not solid. I want to bless y'all, brothers and sisters. Can I bless you? Y'all ready early in the message. I got a ways to go. Pipe down, relax, chill. Don't be fooled. Your foundation determines your future. I want to downshift a little bit. I, your foundation determines your future. Why don't you just kind of chew on that? Say, my 
foundation determines my future. Here's what I'm telling you, that the foundation that you build on is the only foundation that God can use to help you reach his promises. And I just said something, most of you missed it. I'll say it again, the foundation that you build is the only foundation that God can use to help you reach his promises. Many folks have wondered why you haven't reached the promises of God because you can read them, because you can hear somebody tell you about them. You know they exist. Let me give you wisdom and revelation. God uses your foundation to help you reach his promises. And if you got a raggedy foundation, how are you going to reach the promises of God? If you have an inconsistent foundation, you know, where you kind of come to God when you need something, but you don't have a consistent, stable, regular fellowship with God. How are you going to reach the promises of God? Because God uses your foundation. Somebody should check your foundation. See, we don't do much in foundations because foundations oftentimes are the part of the house that is unseen. Kind of like your feet. I wish I had a church in here today. We spend copious amount of time on our face, on our hair, on our outward appearance. But I, I, I would challenge many of you to take off your socks and shoes right now. See, I got quiet. Folks get nervous. Hey, Amen, somebody. Why? Because some of you, some of you left the house today and you put lotion on everything but your feet. Hey, Amen, somebody. Some of you left the house today and you're holy up top, but you're holy down low, too. I wish I had a church in here. Hey, Amen. Why? Because when something is hidden, we have a tendency not to pay it much attention. I stopped by to tell you, don't make that mistake because sometimes the thing that is hidden is more important than the thing that can be seen. Good God Almighty. Your foundation to your house is very important. And if that foundation ain't right, you can have everything beautiful in your home. But after a while, that thing's going to shift and the house is going to come tumbling down. Some folks realize this year they had a faulty foundation. Some folks realize this year they had a fickle foundation. Whether or not the government sends you a stimulus check should not affect your foundation. Now, we want the check. Don't get it twisted. Amen, somebody. We'll take the check. But if they never send a check, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or God see beg for bread. Whether or not they send a check, my foundation ain't going nowhere. Why? Because I made it this far without the check. Y'all don't hear me. Amen, somebody. Somebody say, check your foundation. I got too far to go. Y'all settle down. You're getting too excited too early. You might want to check your foundation. Tell your neighbor, check your foundation. Now you ought to look back at them and say, check your foundation. Uh Uh-huh, yeah, get an attitude, get an attitude, get an attitude. Bring me that piece of paper. I told you to hold on to that for me. I want to show you how important the foundation is. Give me another brother. Who's over there? I'm going to work you today. Patriots. How about them patriots? How about them patriots? Do me a favor. Ella Watkins, just roll this out a little bit. You can go that way. Matter of fact, just go straight out here because I want people to see. Matter of fact, come right here. Patriots, you stand right here. Walkers, you stand right out there and go toward Felicia. I want you to lower it because what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk on it. Okay. Make sure it's tight. Make sure it's right. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get yeah, you hold it down there. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'll take the slack out of it because I'm going to walk. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to walk on it in the air, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to show you how anointed I am today. Amen, somebody. He was going to put it on the floor. No, sir. No, sir. Lower it for me. Amen. Because I want to demonstrate how important your foundation is. See, I want to tell you something. You got it, brother? Hold it now. Hold it. Don't, don't doubt me. Have faith. How long shall I be with you? Have faith, my brother. Now, see, sometimes it can look like a firm foundation. But some of you have learned this year that what you was trying to, uh oh, somebody, okay, y'all a little slow. Maybe it's the angle. Maybe it's the angle. Reset it, because I should have had more response than that. Felicia sitting that close and ain't saying nothing, amen. I'm going to sit her in the back, amen. You sit this close, you got to say something, Felicia. Come on now, come on. See, see the foundation that you step on, that you live on, you got to be careful because if it can't support your weight, come on, somebody. You're going down, and a lot of folk went down this year because they was building their foundation on finances, building their foundation on friendship, building their foundation on relationship. You better check yo. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, what's your foundation look like? Ask them, say, is it fickle or is it firm? What'd they say? If you, no, they lying moves. Somebody say Jesus is is. a firm foundation. Did anybody realize that this year? That he's all right. Amen. Somebody. Did anybody realize this year that he will make a way absolutely out of no way. Turn dark night in the day. Did anybody realize that this year that you've made it through? It's December already. 
Seemed like just a few months ago we were celebrating 2020. And now we're getting ready to enter into 2021. God is a good God. I like what Romans the 14th chapter verse 7 through 9 says. Y'all go with me. I says, for none of us lives to himself alone. Mm -hmm. And none of us dies, Pastor Tish, to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. That's that foundation. That's that foundation. You ain't scared of death. You ain't scared of death. Y'all got to recognize it's appointed to every man to die once. So stop being afraid of death. We all got to die. The point is you need to be ready when it's your time to leave this place. Verse 19 says, for this reason Christ died and returned to life that he might be, don't miss this, the Lord. Come on, Angela Taylor, of both the dead and the living. See, God got it covered. God got the dead covered. He got the living covered. That's why you better build your life on Jesus Christ. Only a fool builds his life on something that cannot give them life after they die. Did you hear what I just said? Only a fool builds his life or her life on something that cannot give you life after you die. And some of you have died and God gave you life. I'm not talking about a physical death, but I'm talking about a mental death. I'm talking about a spiritual death. Some of you died financially and God brought you right back. Folks are amazed that you're still around. Folks are amazed that you're still happy. Folks are amazed that you still got joy. How? Because he keeps bringing me back to life. Ah! I'm standing on something, guys. His name is Jesus. Ain't he all right? Jesus Christ is both Lord of the living and Lord of the dead. Man, you talking about an insurance policy that's too legit to quit. I got him on this side, but I got him on that side. Amen, somebody? Let me tell you, don't you fool yourself and think you got him on this side and don't have him on the other side. You got to make sure that Jesus is Lord of all. He's a firm foundation. What's his name? Jesus. He's the Lord of all. Do you know what the word Lord means? The word Lord in Greek and Hebrew literally means ownership. I like it. So when we say he is Lord, we're literally saying he is owner. I like Psalm 24 and 1. It says it better than I could ever say it. It says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in it. I wrote this down, Mother Oliver. The entire earth is the Lord's ship. I wish I had somebody could feel it like I feel it. Oh, some of y'all ain't never been on no ship. Amen, somebody. I say the earth is the Lord's ship. If you got a ship, you got a captain. The captain is in control. You better make sure that if you're on the Lord's ship, you build your foundation on the owner and not an occupant that's on the ship. Some of you are building your foundation on the occupants. Amen. Love your children. Love your family. Love your friends. But don't you build nobody as a foundation if their name ain't Jesus. Amen, somebody. Because sometimes mama will fail you. Sometimes daddy will let you down. Sometimes sisters and brothers will stab you in your back. I ain't got no church in here. So we don't build our lives on occupants. We love you. But if you leave the day, if you quit the day, if you give up the day, if you lie the day on us, you never were the foundation in the first place. Which begs the question, why did you fall to pieces when they left your life? Show got quiet in here today. You couldn't eat. I don't want to look at nobody now. You couldn't sleep. You even contemplated suicide. Because somebody decided they didn't want to ride. I wish I had a church in here. And when you realize that you are that person, you realize I made a mistake, Pastor. I made a mistake and I started building my foundation on an occupant instead of building the foundation on the owner who is Jesus Christ. But never again will I make that mistake. I've made that mistake too, amen. Used to bother me when folk would leave and not say bye. So got quiet then. Especially if it one of them ones you didn't help die and stuck your neck out for. I ain't got no real church in here, amen. Especially if it one of them ones that you gave one of your last dollars to, amen. You kind of expect folk that you do things for to kind of be a little bit loyal, to kind of have a, I ain't got no church. I guess I'm the only one that get done dirty by people that you've done good for. And there were times Mother Oliver, it would bother my spirit. I didn't want to speak to him, I Wanted to put him to sleep permanently. I ain't got no real church. Amen. You pray for me. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. I still got work that need to be done on me. Amen. And God says, you, God says, you see that right there? 
See how you bothered? See how you angry about that right there? God said, it's your fault. I tried to correct God. It ain't my fault. They, they, they did me wrong. God said, no, the fact that it bothers you this much is your fault because you messed around and stuck them in your foundation, man. I keep telling people, you better let God be the traffic controller of your life. What does that mean, pastor? Allow people to come, but allow people to go just as easily as they can. Let that door swing both. Some of y'all get folks in and you try to block the door. I'm preaching to somebody right now. Why would you want somebody in your life that don't want to stay? Mm, it's quiet in here now. You begging and bothering. No, you should be the person that they want to be around. Not the person you got to beg them to be around. I dare somebody say, I got to get a firm foundation. Can I go just a little deeper? Here's why you should make Jesus your firm foundation. I like y'all today. Because until your foundation is firm, somebody catch this with two hands. Your results will always be fickle. Yeah, right there. Right there. Catch it with two hands right there. Until you get a firm foundation, your results will always be fickle. I figured out the formula and now I know that I'm always going to win. Hmm? What did you say, Pastor? I said, I know I'm always going to win. Even if the score says win zero, enemy a hundred. And it's the fourth quarter. Uh-huh. I know before the game is over, I'm going to win. Either God's going to give me points or he's going to take the enemy's points. But before the game is over, I know I'm going to win. How you know you're going to win? Because I know the foundation that I'm standing on, it ain't never lost a battle. It ain't never lost a fight. It ain't never lost an issue because I'm standing. It's not me. It's that which I stand upon that gives me the victory. But if you're not on a firm foundation, your results are fickle. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes level to the ground. I wouldn't sing that if I was you. You got to be wise enough to build your life on a foundation that's not failing. Be wise enough not to build on a failing foundation in 2021. God's going to give some of y'all another chance. You better hear me because I'm talking to somebody today. God's going to give some of y'all another chance. And all you've been doing for the last 10 years is just duplicating one year after the next year after the next year. You do good for two or three weeks at the beginning of the year. Then you go back to your old foundation. When you're going to stand on God's foundation 12 months out of the year. When you're going to stand on God's foundation 365 days out of the year. And the way you started on January 1 will be the same way you are on December the 31st. Let me tell you something. You got a second chance if you make it to 2021. The question is, are you going to build on your foundation called Jesus? I know that I am because I've got him and I want more of him. One songwriter said, I need a little more Jesus. I've changed and said, I need a lot more Jesus. I named this message, Mother Oliver, I recommend Jesus. What you recommend him for, Pastor, to be your shepherd? Why you recommend Jesus to be my shepherd? Because we started reading that if he's your shepherd, you shall not want. I told you we live in a wilderness of want. But let me bless y'all with something because the Lord is my shepherd. Later today, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want for rest. Somebody say, why you won't want for rest, pastor? I shall not want for rest because he making me lie down in green pastors. I shall not want for refreshment, Pastor Tish, because he leading me beside still waters. I shall not want for restoration because he restoreth my soul. I shall not want for guidance because he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Check that. I shall not want for compensation, companionship, or confidence because I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And I feel no evil and God is with me. I shall not want for comfort. How you know that, Pastor? Because his rod uh, and his entire staff, you'll catch it next week. They come for me. I shall not want for provisions. I don't want nothing. One little girl quoted the scripture and she got it wrong, but I think she got it right. She said, the Lord is my shepherd and that's all I want. And they said, no, baby, you got it wrong. It's the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. She said, mm-mm, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. They say, no, nah, baby, you got it wrong. She said, mm-mm, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I believe that little girl had more revelation than most of us ever get. Because when the Lord is your shepherd, you don't want nothing else. When the Lord is your shepherd, you don't need nothing else. When the Lord is your shepherd, you will not allow anybody to replace him. Because he's brought you this far. You're a fool not to let him take it up. Somebody say, the Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want for provisions because he prepares a table. This is the part I like more than anything. In the presence of my enemies. I love this part right here because I don't care who you are. You probably got some enemies. Even if you don't bother nobody, I promise you, it's always somebody that don't like you. It's always somebody got a problem with you. And all you've ever done was smile and bless them. Why? Because we live in a world full of haters. We are people who live in a culture of vultures. But I want you to know that your haters cannot hinder your harvest. Good God Almighty, I like that right there. Let me say that again. I want you to know that your haters cannot hinder your harvest. Why? Because God is the best at preparing a table in the presence of your enemies. Why? Because he already know they don't want you blessed. He already know they didn't think he was going to make it. But God going to make sure that every enemy sees you sit down at your table. Oh, I know 2020 ain't over yet. And I'm expecting God to still set some tables. I know we got a few days left in 2020. But I'm looking for some tables to be set. I'm looking for some blessings to come our way. I'm looking for God to do some miracle things in our life. Why? Because 2020 is still enough time for God to put some stuff on the table. Give God praise if you know God is a provider. I shall not want. I shall not want. I shall not want for validation because... Thou anointest my head. Somebody needs this with oil. And my cup, call me greedy if you want to, my cup runneth over. What, what you want me to do with all the blessings? My cup runneth over. I didn't pour it, amen, somebody. I didn't create it. My cup runneth over. Quit apologizing for the good God does in your life. Quit making exceptions. Oh, I'm trying to bless somebody who feels a little bad because God's been good to you. And then you know somebody who's not doing as well. If your cup is running over, show them your cup so they can get a cup like your cup and let the same God that's pouring you pour into them. I shall not want for confirmation. Some of y'all are desperate for confirmation. Running here and there for prophecies. Not after you call them angels from Africa. No, ma'am, you can't prophesy. Y'all going, oh, I'm, I'm messing with some of y'all favorites. Oh, let me move on then. I'm messing with your favorites. Amen. See, there's some folk that prophesy and there's some folk that prophesy. You better know the difference. I'm going to leave that longer. I'm messing with some of y'all favorites. I shall not want for confirmation. You know you can get to a place in your walk with God that you are assured of who you are in Christ. Now when it happens, people are going to call you arrogant. When it happens, they're going to say you're cocky. But I discovered that there's something greater than confidence. It's called, Eric, Godfidence. I wish I had a chance. I'm going to go home, man. It's called confidence. It's better than confidence because confidence sometimes is rooted in your degree. Confidence sometimes is rooted in your bank account. Confidence sometimes is rooted in your good looks. But when you ain't got none of that, you can hold your head up with the best of them and say, listen, you ain't no better than me. You ain't going no further than me. You ain't no smarter than me. You're not blessed more than I am. Why? Because I got God for this. What is God for this? It's confidence based in God. Good God Almighty. I shall not want for anything after I die. Now y'all need to tune in. As they say on the radio station, tune in and break the knob off. Because there's a lot of people going to be wanting after they die. Oh, I know we don't talk about heaven and hell no more, but I'm going to talk about it, amen, somebody, because there is a heaven and there is a hell. And it don't matter whether or not you believe in either one of them, they still exist. Paul said, I don't believe in hell. Okay, well, you're going to be really shocked, amen, when you find yourself there. Folks have asked me later today, what if, what if ain't no heaven, Pastor Troy? What if ain't no heaven? You done lived this life and you done sacrificed and you could have been out there having a good time with me. And I'm looking at you and I don't want nothing like you, amen, somebody? What, 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 what if there ain't no heaven, Pastor? Like that, you could have did. You could have could have had your four, five wives. You could have had your six, eight ladies on the side. You got no church in here. There ain't no heaven, Pastor. You could have smoked you some crack every day. You could have robbed the liquor store and the bank on the same day. Matter of fact, rob the bank first, then rob the liquor store. Money and liquor. I ain't got no church in here. What if ain't no heaven, Pastor? And my response is always the same. What if there is? 
Let me be clear, brothers and sisters. I would much rather live this life in pursuit of Jesus Christ. Die and then realize ain't nothing left after life. Than to play the fool and find out that heaven is real, hell is real, Jesus is real, and I had all the time in the world to get it right. I am not going to risk my salvation, and I'm not going to gamble with grace. I shall not want for anything after I die. Why, Pastor? Because I will dwell. God, this is good to me. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I ain't going to visit. I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You got to understand something. If you're going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever, whatever the Lord got, somebody got it over here, you got access to it. I don't mind dwelling in the house. I see why some of y'all ain't clapping. You have been in folks' houses and they didn't have much. I feel you. Destroy that memory. Imagine being in the house of God where ain't no end of the good stuff. Thank you. Amen, somebody. I need you to know that we won't want for nothing. I'm trying to encourage you to make sure Jesus is your foundation. Now, there are going to be folks that's going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. They're going to want for everything. They're going to want for peace. They're going to want for a break from the heat. They're going to want from agony and pain. But if you can let Jesus be your foundation and you stay on that foundation. After this life, you're going to live and you're going to have joy every single day. There'll be no more pain. See, this is why I'm going to stick with Jesus. Hold your seat. Won't be nary a bill. Nowhere need to be paid. Good God Almighty. That's enough for me to live holy right there. Amen, somebody. Catch this, won't be no aches and pains in your body. But when we get to heaven, when we cross over to the other side, won't need no being gay. I ain't got nobody in. Won't need no metamucil. I wish I had a real church in here. Why? Because we're going to be with the Lord and healing will never end. Won't be no sickness. Won't be no hatred. Won't be no backbiting. I'm trying to get you excited about the foundation of Jesus. Here they go. Here we go. Here we go. Some of y'all are still excited. You ain't got to go to work. I guess if you ain't got no job, that don't mean nothing. Amen, somebody. That ought to make you want to serve you. You ain't got to get on a punch no clock. You only got one job in heaven. Do you know what it is? When you see Jesus to fall down on your face and say, holy, 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 holy is the Lamb of God. I can do that job. I wish I had a good God. Of, I can do that job. Holy, 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 holy is the Lamb that was slain. Somebody say, I recommend Jesus.